John Brown was born in Connecticut in 1800 from a Calvinist family, which through them, he would carry abolitionist views. At the age of 12, he had his first job as a tanner, when on a trip to Michigan, he would experience the horrors of slavery firsthand. This will haunt him for the rest of his life, and was the first step on his radicalization to end slavery. Though he studied to be a minister, he ended up becoming a businessman like his dad, moving from state to state, working on several vocations. He ended up having two wives and bore a total of 20 children, but with his business struggling, often in bankruptcy, he ended up having to move again. But during this time, he would befriend Frederick Douglass, which prompted him to move to a black community in New York. He also joined abolitionist groups such as the League of Jilly Lights, which grants African Americans the protection from slave hunters. Gradually, John's view would radicalize, and being religious, he believed that abolishing slavery was part of God's will. In 1855, Brown along with five of his sons moved to Kansas as a year prior, the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 was passed, mandating popular sovereignty. This allows the population to decide whether or not Kansas is a free state or slave state. This in turn result with slaveholders and abolitionists emigrating en masse to tip the balance of power, which resulted with up to 60 to 200 people killed on what's known as Bloody Kansas. John Brown, being an adherent abolitionist, joined the carnage and killed five slave owners during a raid, with one of his sons killed during the fighting. After the incident, John Brown made plans to carry out a mass slave insurrection. With six prominent abolitionists, known as the Secret Six backing it, he was able to muster 22 men. His first plan was to capture the munitions factory at Harper's Ferry to arm the slave for his rebellion. On October 16, 1859, Brown and his sons were able to seize the factory with little resistance. His men also held some slave owners hostage, including George Washington's great-grandnephew. Although he hoped that 1,500 slaves would join his cause, no slave ended up joining, and by then, word had spread with the local militia arriving by late morning, cutting off John Brown's only escape route. Trapped, he and the remaining men tried to hold out, but with more soldiers pouring in, John Brown tried to call for a ceasefire, but with no success. It wasn't until the U.S. Marines, led by Robert E. Lee, that they were able to capture the factory, along with John Brown and his remaining men, with only two being able to escape. Brown was tried guilty for treason and was sentenced to death. In his last words, he states, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood. He was hanged on December 2nd, 1859. Although his goals of a slave rebellion never came true, his actions made him a martyr to the North, and it was the final spark that led to the American Civil War two years later. Music